bottle height we have fluids connecting to the machine into the handpiece to reach into the anterior chamber when we are in foot position one fluids are coming from the bottle into the anterior chamber anterior chamber will be full of fluid till the pressure inside the AC is building up preventing no more fluid to come into the anterior chamber so the flow is not forever it is just to certain time when the pressure in the AC is high enough to prevent any further fluid from coming maybe there will be some leak around the incision that will get few parts of the fluid going on but most of the fluid are stopped if we elevate the bottle so the pressure in the IV line is high then the acute chamber will be deeper more fluids can get inside till again the pressure inside the anterior chamber will be higher enough to prevent no further fluid from coming so if you need to have a deep EC you can elevate the bottle and if the EC is very deep and you need a shallower AC, you can depress the bottle so whenever you are in stage one just you get irrigation coming in irrigation is not forever it is just when the pressure inside the AC is equivalent to the height of the bottle then no more fluid is coming if you depress your pedal to position two or three at that look situation the pump is functioning and aspiration is going on so we have fluids coming out from the anterior chamber as fluid is coming out more fluid will get from the bottle into the EC so we have fluid coming in depending on the bottle height and we have fluid coming out depending on the flow rate the aspiration flow rate if you have a high flow rate fluids will come out quickly if you have slow flow rate the fluids will come out slowly so the flow rate tell you how quick things are happening how fast the material are coming to the tip and second the flow rate tell you how much the AC is evacuated is it the anterior chamber evacuated rapidly or slowly now imagine that this is the anterior chamber and we have fluids coming in then some lens matter come to the tip of the FECO including the tip once the tip is occluded vacuum will start to build up inside the FECO tip and as there is occlusion there is no more aspiration of fluids and as the tip as is fragmenting and removing some of the lens material then at one time the whole material at the tip is removed and the occlusion is overcome so suddenly we don't have any occlusion then aspiration will start to go on again and as we have a huge vacuum here then collapse of the AC is quite liable to occur because we are aspirating huge amount of fluids at huge amount exceeding the ability of fluids coming in this is known as surge so surge means sudden collapse of the anterior chamber when aspiration is very high in comparison to the amount of fluid coming in we can see a video for that
So, how to avoid search? If we increase the height of the bottle, we are forcing more fluid into the antio chamber so we can replace the rapid evacuation of the AC. If we decrease the vacuum, the preset vacuum, if we decrease the preset aspiration rate, now we are emptying the NTU chamber at a slower rate. So we are getting rid of surge. Again, the port of the suction, if you are using a FECO tip with the port one millimeter, this surge is much less than using an aspiration, irrigation aspiration, the aspiration of three millimeters. So if you get a small fecal, uh, if you get a small port size, then the suction will be less. Some of the tips known to have one more mechanism known as the ABS tip. The aspiration bypass tip minimize the occurrence of surge. This is the metal part and here we have the sleeve around it. Fluids coming on from the sleeve filling the NTU chamber. Then things will come back aspirated to the outside. This is the regular way. Here the ABS step we get a small hole here in the metal part. It's not functioning at under unoccluded conditions. When occlusion occurs, then some of the fluids will go directly from around the metal part and the sleeve through the ABS to the lumen. So even with the total occlusion, we have some fluids moving around. This will ensure some thermal protection less heat created by the tip and also with less surge. So the EBS tip, small opening in the metal part, only it functions when occlusion is there so flows will get inside and this can ensure a fluid to go in a rate between 4 to 15 centimeter per minute depending on the tip vacuum level and the state of occlusion. Now a second point is vent. When occlusion is there, vacuum will start to build up to a certain limit. When that limit is reached, the preset limit we adjust the machine to is reached, then vent will happen. A valve will open and some air or fluid will be pushed into the system. This is vent. This is done to prevent the vacuum from exceeding the preset level. So vent occurs when the level of the vacuum reaches to the preset level, preventing further vacuum from building up. Also vent is important when going back to position 1 or 0 to ensure that we reach that situation immediately. Some machines get air vent, other machines have fluid vent. Which is better, air or fluid? If we have occlusion, vacuum building up, reaching to the preset level, valve will open, pushing air or fluid. Which is better, the air or the fluid? Now, imagine this is the tube where we pushing in either air or fluid into a vacuum space. Bubbles of air surrounded by vacuum so the bubbles of air will expand very much while 
bubbles of fluid or drops of fluid will expand only a little when occlusion is overcome and fluid will get inside with maximum aspiration now no more vacuum here so the expansion will be reversed so air bubbles will be very small while fluids will be shrinking but not very much so as you can see air was very expanding and then was very shrinkage so this will add to the space created here so this will cause more surge than fluids so if you are buying a machine it's better to have a machine with fluid vent than a machine with air vent